So if we're going to march boldly forward in 2019, do I got any bold marchers in the house? If we're going to march boldly forward into 2019, we, first of all, we've got to prepare ourselves spiritually. By faith today, with the eyes of faith, I see people getting baptized in water right down here at the front. I see spirit baptism taking place. I hear people testifying of healing. I, I, I see marriages being restored. I see people getting set completely free. Come on. I see the Lord doing great things. I see the presence of God manifesting itself here. And let me tell you something. My heart's desire is not just to preach a message, amen, but I want to preach the word of God in demonstration of the spirit of God and the power of God. I want to see the Lord get honored. Amen. This is his house today. You say, well, how's it going to happen? We got to do the same thing that they did in that day, all right? This is what Joshua told the people. He said, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Has anybody ever seen a wonder from the Lord? <laughs> Let me tell you something. When I, when I see somebody who was bound up to stuff and, and they get free, that's a wonder in my heart. Right. I'm like, wow, that's only amazing. Only God can change the human heart. Only the Lord can set someone completely free from sin. Come on, somebody. And uh, when, I, when I see someone give their life to Christ and, and I see a family come to the Lord, that's a wonder to me. Amen. Wonders still happen. In fact, Mark chapter 16 tells us this, that these signs are going to follow those who believe. Do I got any believers here? It says in my name, they will cast out demons and they will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Wonders. Wonders. Overflowing wonders. Well, is it an automatic thing? Is it going to happen everywhere in every single church all across America? I pray it does. I hope it does. But what if we need to do something to make it happen? What did Joshua tell the people? Sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. Now that word sanctify is kind of a great big old Bible word. I mean, you know, it's a good word. It simply means set apart something. It's not a complicated word. In the Old Testament, they would take certain objects, maybe a bowl or a basin or uh, maybe even a person, and they would set them apart for a certain purpose and uh, for, the, for the Lord. They would dedicate that object to the Lord. It would be blessed. It, was, it became holy. It was set apart. And, and he wants for you and for me to be sanctified. In fact, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. Come on. He is setting us apart. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 23 says this. Now may the God of peace himself, what's it say? Sanctify sanctify you completely. Is there anybody that says, Lord, 2019, I want to be set apart completely. I don't want any part of me not to be dedicated to the Lord. I don't want there to be one little room, one little thought, one little area. No, I want to completely give myself to the Lord. And they says, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord. Amen. Paul is asking God to sanctify the Thessalonians. But let me tell you something. It's something we've got to do as well because in 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 1 it says, therefore having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all of the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And that's why I believe that at the beginning of every year, it's important for Christians, and I'm grateful that this has really taken off all across America, that Christians are setting time apart to fast and to pray and to seek the Lord. Come on. It is the appropriate time. It is the appropriate hour. Now is the time to really seek God. So over the next 14 days, we're asking you as a part of this congregation to seek the Lord. We're asking you to fast and pray. You say, I've never fasted a day in my life. Well, come on. Study biblical fasting. There's plenty of information on the website. Talk to me. Amen. Fast from social media. Fast. Take, a, take an hour a day. Set it aside. Take 30 minutes a day. At least something that you can do to seek the Lord, to pray.
pray, to call upon him. And when you do that, let me tell you what you're doing. You're setting yourself apart, right? You're saying, God, I want you to use me. God, I want to be filled with you. God, I want 2019 to be an amazing year. I just want your blessing upon me, upon my family, upon my church, upon my city, upon my nation. Come on, how many of you believe that God answers prayer? How many of you believe that when we humble ourselves, that the Lord hears us? Amen. The scripture says, humble yourself underneath the hand of the Almighty, and in due time, he will lift you up. Amen. Ephesians 5, 26 tells us this, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you something. I know that reading this Bible is just like soap. The other day I got out of my yard and I did, oh, my goodness, about 11, 55 gallon bags full of leaves. We had had dogs out in the backyard. You don't need to explain more. And I came in the house. Ooh, I'm grateful for soap, aren't you? And the word is like soap. And so I want to give you a little acrostic today. Maybe you're brand new to the kingdom. Maybe you've never really studied the Bible before. Maybe you've never really read the Bible. Maybe you don't have that as a habit in your life. I want to give you a way that you can study the Bible. It's easy to remember. Okay? It's a little acrostic. First thing that you do is you take a scripture. All right? There might be a chapter or portion of, of, of the Bible. And you, and you read that. And then you go back and you read it again. Why do you read it again? It's because you're supposed to be meditating on it. Right? You're supposed to be thinking about it. And so as the say that so the first word is S, scripture. The second word is observation. Go back, look at it again, and then you write down what you observe about that scripture. And then you go back and you study it some more and you think about it some more and you think now how does this scripture apply to me? How does the observation that I've made, how does it apply to me? All right, and you write down, this is how this applies to my life. And then what you can do is you can write out a prayer in your journal and say, Lord, help me to fulfill that. And I'm going to tell you something. I will guarantee you this. If you'll begin to do that every single day, if you'll take the time to get the word and then let it sanctify and cleanse you, you will discover that it's just like taking a bath. Come on. It's like the washing of the water of the word. Come on. Is there anybody that's excited about the word of God today? Amen. You say, I'm going to get in it. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to digest it. It is your bread. Come on. That's right. Amen. Sanctify yourselves. Humble yourselves. And then secondly, if we're going to go forward in the 2019, we've got to be willing to follow his leading. That's right. God is always speaking and God is always moving. Uh -huh. A lot of people kind of think that God is like a big kid that kind of, you know, he had a top and set the top spinning and he just watched the top spinning and, uh, you know, and God set the world spinning and he just left it alone. That is not the God that we serve. God is active in the world. God is doing things in our world. Amen. God is moving in our world and he's constantly doing things and that's why we have got to follow him. Now let me go back to the book of Joshua for a moment. It says in Joshua 3 and verse 4, it says, Yet there shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it that you may know the way by which you may go. Now in those days, my friends, the presence of, of God above the mercy seat, man, it, the people were afraid of that. They were, they had been, they had heard of Sinai. They had some of been to Sinai. They had felt the shake. They'd seen the lightning. They'd seen the smoke. They said, Moses, you go up there. Ah, we, we don't want to go up there. He's too scary to be around. But, but you know, they couldn't get in front of the ark. They, they, they said they couldn't lag too far behind. But they Man, that is a long distance away. I'm certainly glad today, actually it's about a thousand yards away. I tried to think of what would be a thousand yards away. Probably somewhere over there by, by uh, you know, by, by, by Taco Bueno or something. I'm certainly glad to say, God's over there by Taco Bueno. Let's keep our eyes on him. Aren't you glad you live in this dispensation? Amen. Come on. If you're a believer in Jesus, 
Christ is in you. Christ yeah. in you. Yeah. Hope yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. I said he's right in you. Yeah. You know what Jesus said? He said, my sheep know my voice. Yeah. There's a still small voice that's still yeah. speaking today. And it says, this is the way. Go there. And turn this way. Go there. Let me tell you something. If you train your ear, you can hear what the Spirit of God that's is right. saying to right. the And so we are, if we're, if we're going to follow him, we've got to develop that closeness and intimacy of relationship so that we can hear him speak to us. Am I right? Amen. And I'll tell you, I'm grateful for the Holy Spirit, aren't you? Amen. 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 You know, in that day, on the ark, the, the presence of God was on the ark of the covenant a thousand yards away, ten football fields away, man. Let me tell you where the paraclete is. The Bible that uses that word to describe the Holy Spirit paraclete, all right? And what it means is that he's the one who's called alongside. Come on. Okay, is anybody grateful that the Holy Spirit is right alongside of you? Amen. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He is right there. Come on. Right when you're walking down through Walmart. Come on. Right when you're doing whatever you're doing, whatever, however you work, whatever and every place you go, the Spirit is with you. And if he's with us like that, I believe he can lead us. That's right. 